All right, so everybody gather around for the demo. So those of you that are new, this is kind of the format of the class. We do 20 minutes of warm up, so four or five for the warm up, and then a 25 minute demonstration where I kind of go through the process or uh, address something specific about the process, but basically do my instructor thing. And then we set up a long post for the rest of the class. You guys draw from the model, and I walk around and give you one-on-one -on -one help as is needed. All right, so whenever I start a, a drawing, really of any kind, but especially with a figure drawing, I want to try and fill up the page as much as I can. So I want to start off with a big envelope for the figure, um, basically setting up the parameters. This is the way that I like to go about it, but really any way to get the big shape on the page, that's what you want to do. So what I want to do is start off with a big shape that matches the shape that's up there, and mainly what I want to focus on is the height to width ratio. So real quick, I'm going to take a measurement of the pose. So I'm going from her left hip to, or I'm sorry, her right hip to her left knee. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. So I'm going to lock my hand in place, rotate that 90 degrees, and see how that compares to the height. It's a little over half the height. So what that means to me is the pose is a little more than half is wide. So it's basically the width is about a little more than half the height. That's what I'm looking at. So I basically want to get a box on the page that's a little more than half the height. So, so what I'm going to do is mark the top of the pose, so top of the head, bottom of the foot. Give myself a little bit of breathing room on each end, a little bit more at the bottom, because just in general that's a good idea, but also I have more to work with at the bottom, so if I want to vignette at the drapery I can, if I want to go all the way to the bottom of the stool I can. So I've got some, some, some give down there at the bottom. Then what I'm going to do is find exactly halfway. This doesn't represent anything on the model yet, it's just halfway between the top and the bottom of the pose. So right about there. And since I know the width is a little bit more than half the height, I can take just a little bit more than half the height. And this isn't real scientific. Again, I'm just looking for something that generally is the shape that's up there. And then I'll also find halfway there as well. So that's the exact middle of the pose. Again, that doesn't represent anything yet. It's just ge uh, geometrically the middle of the pose. Top, bottom, left, right, center of the pose. So now I'll find what is the center of the pose up there on the, on the, on the figure. If I go... Eh. So her navel is exactly halfway from the top to the bottom. And pretty close to her side there, her left side. So from our point of view, the right side of her body is pretty much uh, halfway from left to right. So I know the side of her body is going to go there. I know the navel will be roughly there. If I go based off of that, then I can come out here and say, okay, I know the knee is going to be somewhere roughly about there because it's the rightmost portion of the pose. Taking a plumb line down from the navel, I know her foot will be roughly there. So a plumb line is an exact vertical or horizontal measurement. So straight over from the navel is pretty close to the knee. The knee is a little bit below that. Directly below the navel on this pose is her foot, so I know her foot will be there. This hip will be somewhere roughly about there, which looks a little wide to me right now, but again, we're just looking for ballpark. Straight up from the navel is the pit of the neck. So pit of the neck will be somewhere about here. Generally speaking, on, on most people, halfway from the navel to the top of the head will be the pit of the neck. I can check that on her to see if that's true. It's a little bit above that on her. So if I go boom, boom, pit of the neck, a little bit above halfway between the navel and the top of the head. But again, I don't need to be exact. I'm just looking big picture. So don't get too caught up in things right now. I know that her shoulders will sweep through that. Neck will be here. I look at that distance from the pit of the neck up to the chin. And the head will be right about there. I know that that's at least going to get everything in the ballpark. Is it exact? No. But I know it's in the ballpark. So now I know the whole figure is going to fit on the page. It's going to reasonably fill up the page. The head's going to be roughly that size. Thigh will be roughly that long. Torch will be roughly that long. So on and so forth. So now that I've got that big envelope established on the page saying that's going to be 
the figure. It's going to fit right in that shape, again, roughly. Now, from the pit of the neck down to the crotch. A C curve. Your gesture lines, your rhythm lines, your Riley lines are going to be C curve, S curve, straight. CSI. Easy to remember. If you get any more complicated than an S curve, you're getting into contour. Too early for contour. Contour is fine. It's got its place. But early on in a drawing like this, we don't want to get too caught up in minutia and detail. We just want to get the big picture of the drawing set up as quickly as possible. The body isn't just a sausage. It isn't just like that. So I don't want to just connect the shoulders to the hips. The, the figure is an hourglass, so it's wider at the shoulders, narrower at the waist, wider at the hips. So if I get two triangles, that allows me to take an hourglass shape and draw a bent hourglass. I wouldn't want to have to try and freehand a bent hourglass. I might as well just, you know, contour draw at that point. But if I have these two triangles, if I bend those two triangles, then they come together and they create an hourglass, a bent hourglass. Okay, so now that I have head, shoulders, pelvis, and the relationships established, the gesture of those things established, now I want to start getting into the limbs. So again, if this is my navel here, I know that the thigh is coming out just below that, somewhere about there, and that's got a really simple gesture to it. There isn't too much going on. In fact, if I wanted to, I could make it a straight. I'm not a big fan of, of just long straight lines like that. I feel like they're stiff, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a bow. I like to push straights in more structural areas. Like the knee. Line one, line two. Square off that knee. I think that hip needs to come out a little bit more. That might help with that length of that thigh a little bit. So just because that thigh is long, that's why I don't want to jump to any conclusions. It looks long to me, but it might be that that hip needs to come out. Well, that'll help shorten that thigh up right there. Get up to this arm. Here's the shoulder. Here's the elbow. Elbow. Down to the hand, resting at the knee. Those ones I can, I can stop on the point if I want to because I know where that hand's going to be. I don't have to measure that out later. I know that hand is sitting on the knee. So I just need to kind of connect up the dots. Shoulder down to the hand. Pretty easy. So now we have the figure sitting on the page. It's all spaced and placed pretty well using the Riley method, which is just those simple rhythms, line one, line two, shoulders to the crotch, neck to the hip. It's all looking pretty good now. So now I'm going to go in, and if gesture is the movement between forms, structure is the movement across or around forms. So now we want to start getting into mannequinizing. That's a term you've probably heard. Basically the same thing as structure. Mannequinizing, structure, movement across around forms, volume, whatever you want to call it. It's all basically the same thing. So we want to get in here and get the, the mass of the rib cage in there. Simple oval. Mass of the pelvis, sitting in three-dimensional space, like so. We can even come in and get the breasts in there. Don't draw circle template breasts. Get them a natural hang, they're fatty padding that will conform to the shape of the rib cage. You can use an oval to establish rough proportion and placement, but then needs to wrap around the rib cage, lock into the pecs, and wrap around the rib cage. All those forms are riding atop the rib cage. Are you simplifying shapes so they read better? Uh, I'm, I'm simplifying shapes because it's the simplifying shape phase of the drawing. Um, I do, I personally do feel like it reads better, but it's more just that just like I simplified all the, all the contour down into gesture, which is C-curve, S-curve, straight, kind of the same thing with the shadow pattern. I, right now I'm just keeping things simple so that I can get all the players on the board. Once I get all the players on the board, then I can start going in and rendering, I can start going in and working edges, I can start going in and 
you know, adding in more complex anatomy, you know, whatever I feel like is going to work for the drawing, I can start making more artistic decisions at that point. But right now, it's just about, this is very, very utilitarian. I mean, not that I don't want it to look nice, but it's very, very utilitarian, meaning uh, just what do I need in there? I, I'm, I'm a fan of saying, get what needs to be in there, no more, no less. No more than you need, no less than you need. Just get that big picture of the drawing established. And then you can start making decisions about what you want to be in the drawing. But if you rely on something to get the drawing established, then you're stuck. You have to use that thing. If you're reliant on anatomy, you have to use anatomy. If you're reliant on rendering, you have to render. If you're reliant on full value, you have to use full value. But if I can get a drawing to work in a very simple, two-value, graphic approach to drawing, then I can choose whether I'm going to put in a lot of anatomy or I can choose whether I'm going to put in a lot of value or I can choose whether I'm going to do a lot of rendering and it's completely up to me. Just across the board, if you get to the end of the class and you have a strong two value drawing that looks like what's up there, rendering is just, it's pick and shovel work. To me, rendering is just, it's sweat equity. Most people can render long before they can really draw well because it really just re requires sitting down and doing that for hours. But if you can get this strong, solid foundation in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, then it really opens up a lot of doors for you to be able to work economically in, in your personal work when, when you're at home working in your studio. Or, you know, if this is your end goal. If this is, I just want to get really good at life drawing. That's totally fine, too. But you want to be economical about it. And you want to be able to establish your drawing. Like, I look at this and I go, okay, you know, there's some things I want to change, but everything's in there and it's looking pretty good. You know, there's nothing in there. I'm just going, oh man, that head's way too big, or that foot's way too small, or the angle of the arm's off. I'm looking at it, it's looking pretty good. So then, from here, it would just be a matter of just starting to take an area and bring it up to full value, render it out, make it look the way I want it to look. Right now, this, it looks the way it needs to look. From here forward, I would start making decisions that I make it look the way I want it to look. I start crafting into the, the, the artwork that I would like it to be. But this is, this, is the, this is the academic stuff. This is the draftsmanship. This is, what, this is the foundation that everything's built on, similar to your house. You don't get to have a lot of opinion in the foundation of your house, right? I mean, the slab has to be laid level, has to not crack, it has to be solid, right? But then once you get to the crown molding in your house, well, that's all opinion. Do you even want crown molding? What crown molding? What color do I paint the crown molding? That's all opinion. And it, art is very much the same way. This, not a lot of opinion involved in this. But everything from here forward, it starts to get more and more opinion up until the end. Okay? All right. Yep.